What is up, engine heads? Welcome to another episode of Boost School, the YouTube equivalent of a university course on forced induction. Now, today's episode is a bit different from all of our previous episodes because today's episode is brought to you by GFB or Go Fast Bits from Australia, and they have provided us with this. This is an absolutely beautiful ball of valve, which we'll be using for demonstration purposes in this video and then later installing into my turbo engine build. We need this because today we're going to do a detailed video on compressor surge, aka turbo flutter, and we'll be explaining how it happens and why it's bad for your turbo and how a ball of valve gets rid of it. So let's get started. So here we have an engine. Connected to the engine, we have an intake manifold and an exhaust manifold. Connected to the exhaust manifold, we have a turbocharger. The hot side of the turbo is obviously also connected to the rest of the exhaust, while the cold side of the turbo sucks in air through the turbo inlet, compresses it, and then sends it out via the turbo outlet through the intercooler into the engine. At the entrance into the intake manifold, we have a throttle plate. The throttle plate dictates how much air is allowed into the engine. The more the throttle plate opens, the more air comes in. The more air comes in, the more fuel we can inject to make more powerful combustion vents. The more powerful the combustion vents, the more power we make and ultimately the harder the vehicle accelerates. So let's imagine a concrete scenario. You're flooring it, wide open throttle, maximum opening of the throttle plate, maximum air coming into the engine, so the engine is working very hard, it's trying to make the most powerful combustions it can, which means that it's also producing a lot of exhaust gases very rapidly. And this large amount of exhaust gases is driving the turbine wheel very, very quickly, because the turbine wheel is connected to the compressor wheel via a common shaft, the compressor wheel is also spinning very, very fast, and it's trying to compress the air as much as possible. So in other words, the harder the engine is working, the harder the turbo is working and the harder and the more it's trying to compress the air that it's stuffing into the engine. So when the throttle plate is wide open, we have both high air flow and high air pressure. We have high air flow because the throttle plate is wide open. Because it's wide open, there's no restriction to air flow. So we have a high amount of air coming very fast through the intake manifold. We also have high air pressure because the turbo is working very hard. It's trying to compress the air as much as possible. In other words, it's trying to stuff as much air as possible into the same space, thus increasing its pressure. Now, flooring it is really fun, but as you know, it can never last forever. Eventually, you're going to run out of RPMs and you're going to have to shift gears, or maybe there's a corner coming and you have to start braking. Of course, in such a scenario, you're going to release the throttle pedal and the throttle plate is going to snap shut. So when the throttle plate snaps shut, what does that mean for our engine? Well, it means that we have created a pretty dramatic and sudden restriction to airflow at a time when airflow was previously very high and the turbo was spinning very rapidly trying to compress and stuff as much air as possible into the engine. We can make an analogy between this scenario and a person drinking water. So what would happen if you suddenly closed your mouth while drinking water? Now something kind of similar actually happens inside our engine when we suddenly release the throttle after flooring it. What actually happens is that we're transitioning rapidly from a situation of high airflow and high air pressure into a situation of low airflow and even higher pressure. We're transitioning into low airflow because the throttle plate suddenly closes, the rapidly moving air hits a dead end and it has nowhere to go. But on the other hand, the turbo still has a lot of momentum left in it, it's still rapidly spinning and it's still trying to stuff air into the engine, which it can't do because the throttle plate is closed and this sudden blockage further increases the pressure inside the intercooler piping. Now the blades of a compressor wheel inside a turbo are designed to grab onto the air. They grab the air and push it along into the turbo. Now in a scenario where we have high air flow and high air pressure followed by a sudden closing of the throttle plate, the dramatic drop in air flow and a spike in air pressure that follows after the throttle plate closes can actually overpower the aerodynamic capabilities of the compressor wheel blades, causing them to be no longer capable of grabbing the air. 
and this then leads to compressor surge. If you look at a compressor map of any turbocharger, this line right here is going to be your surge line. Everything left of this line is your surge zone. When compressor surge occurs, it simply means that we have too much air pressure and too little airflow for the compressor wheel of the turbo to do its job. When this happens, the air has nowhere left to go and it carries so much pressure behind it that it can actually force its way past the compressor wheel blades and out the intake. This wrong way out actually becomes the only escape path for the highly pressurized air. Now, compressor surge in a car engine is almost never powerful enough to stop the turbo and can certainly not change the direction of the rotation of the turbo, but what, what it can definitely do is that it can slow the turbo down and shorten its lifespan because it exposes the turbo to increased stress. Now, when compressor surge, aka turbo flutter, happens, it makes a very characteristic sound. So this sound is actually telling us what's happening inside the engine. Instead of grabbing onto the air and pushing it into the engine, the compressor blades are actually chopping up the air. This is happening due to the increased air pressure and reduced airflow, which is forcing the air against the blades. It's forcing the air to actually separate from the blades and eventually a small amount of air is going to escape past the compressor blades out through the intake. When this happens, when a bit of air escapes, it's going to relieve the local air pressure. And this is going to allow the compressor blades to again grip onto the air and again try to push it into the engine. But the throttle plate is still closed and the turbo still has a lot of momentum left. It's still spinning very fast, so it's still trying to do its job. So when again, when it grabs onto the air and tries to push it, the air still has nowhere to go. So air pressure again increases. The turbo just managed to briefly escape the surge zone, but by doing what it does, it again pushes itself back into the surge zone. Pressure again increases until again it separates the air from the blades and then again another small chunk of air escapes out the intake. The cycle actually keeps repeating itself because the turbo is still spinning very fast, but on the other hand, the throttle plate is still closed. And every time the cycle repeats, a small amount of air gets to escape past the compressor blades out the intake. And every time a bit of air escapes, it relieves local air pressure until all of the excess air pressure is relieved in the intercooler piping or until the throttle plate opens again. Now the sound of compressor surge or turbo flutter is often voiced as or now each of these stew or chew is actually a small amount of air separating from the compressor blades and escaping out the intake. The first stew is going to be the loudest because it carries the most air pressure behind it. And each subsequent stew is going to be less loud until all of the excess air pressure is relieved. It's undeniable that the sound of turbo flutter is interesting, but it can actually be bad for your turbo because it exposes it to some very strong pressure pulses. Unless turbo flutter is of negligible magnitude, it's going to shorten the lifespan of your turbo and your bearings and your compressor wheel are going to bear the brunt of the damage. Obviously, most of us don't have the budget to replace turbo charges very often, so compressor surge is best avoided. So how do we avoid compressor surge that occurs when you release the throttle? Well, instead of letting the excess air pressure force its way past the compressor blades, we simply relieve all the excess air pressure at some other point in the system. And that's exactly what a BOV or blow off valve like this one does. As its name suggests, it blows off or gets rid of the excess air pressure in the system when you release the throttle. By blowing off the pressure at a different location in the system, we do not subject the turbo and its components to the increased stresses and shock loads associated with turbo flutter. Now, when it comes to getting rid of the excess air pressure, you have two options. Option one is to simply vent everything into atmosphere. Option two is to recirculate it back in front of the turbo inlet. Venting everything everything into atmosphere will give you a loud hissing sound like this. As you can see, instead of letting the excess air pressure force its way past the compressor blades in small chopped up chunks, we simply and efficiently release all of it at once. 
Your other option is to be stealthy and do what the OEMs do, and that is to recirculate everything in front of the turbo inlet. By recirculating, you're going to lose the hissing sound, but in reality, recirculation is more efficient because when you vent everything into atmosphere, you lose all the work previously done by the turbo. So when you're back on the throttle, the turbo has to start making boost from zero again, which can result in noticeable lag between gear shifts. But there's a better option than being forced to choose between 100% recirculation and 100% venting, and that's to use a clever dual port like this ball valve from Go Fast Bits. And it gives you a nearly infinite number of choices when it comes to the ratio between venting and recirculation. As I said, this ball valve has two ports, one for venting to atmosphere and one for recirculation, which means that you can set it up to do both at the same time. The beautiful thing is that it doesn't have just a few preset positions between venting and recirculation. Instead, you can choose any of the nearly infinite number of positions between 100% venting and 100% recirculation by simply turning this knob. This is an exceptionally well-made product and turning this knob is honestly pure pleasure. But other than knob turning pleasure, it also means that you can set this thing up to recirculate most of the air and vent just enough to atmosphere to give you a nice psh sound. That also means that this BOV can be set up to work with a turbocharged engine using a mass airflow sensor, or MAF. Usually venting to atmosphere on engines that have a MAF doesn't work perfectly because a MAF has already metered the air you're venting and is injecting fuel for the air that you're not actually letting into the engine and are dumping into the atmosphere instead. This means that you can get side effects such as engine stumbling or even stalling when you release throttle as the engine runs rich for a brief moment when the throttle plate closes. Sometimes you can even see black smoke coming out the exhaust. But with the GFB response, you can fine tune your setting to recirculate enough air until the engine is happy while also still getting the ball off sound. Okay, so now we know what a ball valve does, but how does it do it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Okay, as you can see, we have multiple connections on the ball valve. And this part, the bottom part, is what gets connected to the intercooler piping. And as you can see, on the underside, we have a piston. When this piston is in its bottommost position as it is now, it prevents any air from escaping past it. At the top, we also have this connection, and it's connected via a hose to the intake manifold after the throttle body. This means that when the throttle plate is fully open, the top of the piston and the bottom of the piston see the same air pressure. But inside, there's also a spring acting on top of the piston. And when the throttle plate is fully open, the spring is what keeps the piston down. Now, boost pressure cannot overpower the spring because the same boost pressure is also present on top of the piston. But what happens when we close the throttle plate? High pressure remains in the intercooler piping and below the piston. But the top of the piston is now seeing much lower pressure or vacuum. The closed throttle plate prevents high pressure air from entering the intake manifold, while at the same time the downward motion of the piston is actually quote unquote sucking air into the engine, creating a low pressure zone in the intake manifold past the throttle plate. This means that the high air pressure in the piping can now overpower the spring and lift the piston. The high pressure air rapidly escapes out from the piping, relieving any excess air pressure. By turning the knob, we simply choose how much each of the different ports gets obstructed and thus choose how much of the air is recirculated and how much vented to atmosphere. So as you can see, a very simple, effective and elegant solution. So now we know what the BOV does, we know how it does it. The final question is, where do we install it? Well, anywhere between the turbo outlet and the throttle plate. Now, in most cases, it's best to avoid installing a BOV very close to the turbo outlet because this part, the piping near this part, can have unpredictable pressure fluctuations which can confuse the ball valve, causing it to work incorrectly. In most cases, the best location is after the intercooler and before the throttle plate. So is there a scenario where a ball valve cannot help you get rid of compressor surge, aka turbo flutter? Well, yes, there is, and it is when turbo flutter occurs during wide open throttle instead of when you close the throttle. 
When turbo throttle occurs during wide open throttle, it means that your turbocharger is trying to stuff more air into the engine than the engine can ingest. In other words, you have a mismatch between your turbocharger and your engine. And to fix it, you'll need to either modify your turbocharger or change some components or simply get a completely different turbo. And there you have it. That's pretty much it when it comes to compressor surge and blow off valves. I hope this video helps you better understand how these things work and how they affect the performance of your engine and the noises it makes. As always, thanks a lot for watching. I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4HF.